Morning. Boy, it is a cold one today. Time to get this greenhouse fired up. And it is a mess. First thing we're going to do today is get this heater fired up and clean this disastrous mess up because it's time to get plants out here. Currently only 34 degrees in here. All right, we have fire. Looks like everything's working. Things will warm up quickly now. The first thing we need to do in here is put away all of the flats, get them all stacked along the side wall there, and then start pulling all the weeds and getting all the debris out here. And the easiest way to do that is to move some of these racks out of the way, make a big pile, carry it all out, and then we'll get it all swept up. And I've found the best way to do that without moving all the concrete blocks is to use an air blower. Now that we've got all the clean done, we've got the racks back in place, and we're ready to bring some plants out here soon. But before I can bring the plants out, I'm going to run the loads and get some uh, insulation blue board like that sheet in the very back there. We're going to lay those down on top of the racks to help keep those uh, root balls of the plants warm. Even though the air temperature is about mid-60s, the roots will get about mid-50s because I don't have any radiant floor heat. So the insulation board will help keep them warm. Now I want to save the flats and the inserts these are uh, called pro trays, 72 count pro tray. Try to knock all the old dead plants out. And we will reuse those again this spring. Normally we do this in the summertime after we've planted everything. And it didn't happen this year. There we go. We got five sheets here. I didn't have to go to Lowe's after all. My brother had some of these uh, left over from his uh, house edition. These will work perfect. Save me a lot of money too. Now that we got our insulation board down on the racks, I'm gonna lay out uh, 70 flats for filling up with these rock wool cubes. And I'll show you here shortly the little plants that are gonna be going in these holes. But first thing we gotta do is get these laid out, get them all wetted down and watered and some fertilizer in there. And then we'll be ready to do some transplanting. Oh my goodness, you're so excited to see me, yes. So excited. These are the plants that we're moving out to the greenhouse right now. They are busting at the seams. We like to get them transplanted into those bigger blocks before they are three inches tall. And they are every bit of that now. So let's get them out of here. This is what it looks like when they were first seeded. If you look real close, you can see some of those uh, seeds down in there. These are grape tomatoes right here. I have them covered up because we need to keep them close to uh, 82 degrees or so. And these need to be around 62 to 65. 70 at the highest during the day. We use the ready heat propagation mats for germinating our seeds. And this is the little controller box keep them at the right temperature. And above, you can see I have two grow lights, 1,000 watt grow lights. To give them the supplemental light they need, well, they're getting started. Hey, Tassie, are you gonna help? Are you gonna help? All right, the plants are nice and warm and cozy in the greenhouse. And believe it or not, that is 1,000 plants right there. 
Now we're going to pick about the best 750 plants to plant over there into those flats, into the 4 inch cubes. And then from those 750, we'll pick the best 615 that will ultimately go into the main greenhouse where they will live out the rest of their lives. Now 615 plants right there out of that pile should give us approximately 15,000 pounds of ripe, red ripe tomatoes to be sold at farmers markets. All of these tomatoes will be for one greenhouse. We have three more to go after this. So as you can imagine, this keeps us fairly busy during the winter time and early spring, getting these things all seeded, grown, and transplanted to begin growing and producing ripe tomatoes. Now, if you were interested in seeing the seeding process of these tomatoes, um, I didn't film it this year, but I did last year. So I will drop that video down below in the, in the description box and at the end of the video if you're interested in checking that out. Next up, I'm gonna get the cubes in those flats, get them watered, and get these things transplanted. All right, I have all of our four inch blocks brought into the greenhouse. This is called rock wool. And they have a one and a half inch hole in them. And they go right into the flat like this. The flat only holds 10, so I gotta break one off and move it to the flat. So we're gonna put uh, 10 in each flat. We'll get these all filled all the way through here, all 70 flats. And then we'll be moving these plants into those after we get them watered. It takes a lot of water to saturate these cubes. They, uh, they hold a lot of water, so I have to go over them like three times with the uh, water hose until they're fully saturated. If you're wondering what this uh, rock wool is made of, by the way, it's also called stone wool. I know in Canada it's usually called stone wool. It's just different companies that make it. Um, it's, it's almost like fiberglass insulation, but it's uh, kind of a byproduct of the steel industry. Um, basalt rock which is volcanic rock and slag. Um, the minerals are melted and spun into fibers. So that's all it is. It's inert and sterile. Perfect growing medium for vegetables as long as you can feed them properly with the right fertilizers. This is our tank of water that we're gonna be watering our four inch cubes with. I mixed some calcium nitrate and some 91530 in there and some acid. So we want this water to be about a five and a half pH, give or take. And we want our electrical conductivity to be just a little over two. Just about where we want it, 2.3. Now we need a way to transfer that water to the four inch cubes. And that's where the handy dandy transfer pump comes in. We got water. All right, we want to completely saturate these cubes again. And by doing this, we will flush out the plain water that came from our well, which has hardly any nutrients in it, and the pH is way too high. So now, what will be left in the cube is what we are watering now, with a, an electrical conductivity of two to 2.3, somewhere in that ballpark is good, and a pH of around five and a half, or even low fives is fine. Tomatoes like that, low pH, it makes more of the nutrients available to the plant. If we did not lower the pH and just fed it straight well water of 7.8 to 8 pH, there would be a lot of the nutrients that wouldn't be taken up by the plant properly. Alright, we're ready to do some transplanting. So I'm going to grab this slab and just break it in thirds, maybe sixths. Now you can see how nicely those roots have penetrated the rock wool. And for the most part, they air pruned. And what that means is when uh, they come through the bottom of the rock wool, they'll stop because I had them up on a rack and they'll fill in the cube rather than grow out of the cube and make a big mat on the bottom. So these are ready to go. So what we do is just, we just break off an individual cube, stick it right down the hole. It doesn't get any easier than that. I mean, a three-year-old kid could help do this. There's uh, 10 
four inch cubes in each flat. So these four inch cubes will be in this greenhouse for about one month. And that'll put their age at about six or seven weeks old from seeding. And in about a month from now, they're gonna be over two feet tall. I'll have a bamboo stake I'll have to put in each cube and clip the plant to the bamboo stake so it doesn't fall over. Now, once they are over two feet tall and they'll start to have flower buds beginning to open on them, we will take them out to another greenhouse where they will be put into a Beto bucket, a Dutch Beto bucket, two plants per bucket. I've shown this process before on previous videos. I will link those in the description below and probably put them at the end of the video if you wanna watch one of those. But I will be showing the entire process this year as well on the farm channel. So stay tuned for that if you would like to see the plant grow from seed all the way to harvest. So I wanna get the biggest and the best, the stockiest, just the healthiest looking plants because those are the ones that are gonna produce the most tomatoes. And just like that, we have one variety finished. This variety is Torero, a very popular greenhouse variety. It is an indeterminate variety, which means it will continue to grow and grow and grow and never stop as long as it has the proper nutrition, the proper light, and the proper heat. These will produce for months and months and months. You could potentially harvest these year round. Uh, eventually, they're going to fizzle out, but uh, we try to harvest five or six months, you know, give or take. All right, let's jump into our next variety. This one is Ferranti, Ferrante. Um, and then the one over there where I have the most cubes to plant is Big Dina. Big Dina is a very good variety for us, and that's why we plant the most. Our favorite variety has been discontinued. It was Geronimo. I don't know why they stopped producing it. It was the, by far the best tomato we ever grew in our greenhouse. But Big Dina is a close second. If you're wondering what we do with our extra tomatoes, the leftovers that I did not plant. I hang on to those for a couple weeks just as a safety precaution because you never know, I may have planted a bad one or maybe one won't grow properly. And then I can go back to the leftovers and find a good one to replace it. It's about 69, 70 degrees in here on a completely 100% cloud cover day here in Ohio. If it was a clear blue sky and sunny, it would be almost unbearably hot in here. I'd probably have to turn my exhaust fan on in the back to draw some fresh air in, or at least open the door. But uh, yeah, it's unbelievable how much heat that even a cloudy day can provide in the greenhouse. I'll show you outside what it looks like. Below freezing and three or four inches of snow. But in here, toasty warm. Free heat from the sun. However, as soon as the sun starts to go down, or later in the day, around four or five o'clock, that heater will start running and it'll come on geez, every 10 minutes all night long. So we do burn a lot of propane. Luckily, this is a pretty small greenhouse, so it doesn't take a lot of heat to keep it at that 64, 65 degrees right where we want it for tomatoes. Something else I wanted to mention real quick before I forget is how we monitor the warmth of our greenhouse in here throughout the night. What if the heater went out? What if we lost power? You know, how would I know? That's where the Sensiphone comes in. This is the Sensiphone 400. It's kind of older technology, but it works great for us. But we don't have to hook it up to a landline anymore because I have this Verizon box. So it kind of works as an extra, an extra cell phone line. So I program the Sensiphone with temperature limits, a high and low temperature limit. And then I set uh, up to four phone numbers for it to call when it triggers a low temp alarm or a high temperature alarm. So right now I have it set at 50 degrees um, to call me. And then if it doesn't get my phone, it calls my son, then my brother, and then my folks. So I have about three backups in case I don't hear the phone call in the middle of the night. And it'll call if there's a power outage. It'll call if it gets below the 50 degree temp limit that I set it at. I also set it at 95, because later on in the spring or late winter, when these plants are about two feet tall, um, we don't want it to get too hot in here. And on hot sunny days, it would be well over 100 in here. And the exhaust fans, the exhaust fan will run back there and these louvers that I have covered up right now because of the cold, they'll open up and draw fresh air in to keep it below, oh, 88 degrees or so. But uh, yeah, if the power went out, 
it would scorch the plants in a matter of hours. So I'll show you here real quick. I'm gonna hit what is temp limit. Zone number. And this is this greenhouse is zone the one. Low temperature limit is 50 degrees. The high temperature limit is 95 degrees. Well, folks, this is where we're gonna wrap up today's video. Next week, we're gonna be changing out plastic on another greenhouse and prepping one of the larger greenhouses for all these baby plants. If you have any ideas or suggestions for future farm videos, please let me know down in the comments below because I plan on ramping up video production for the Wishwell Farms channel this spring and summer quite a bit. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you all again real soon down on the farm.